Hey there, I'm Susie, and thank you for clicking on my video. I appreciate you. You're the best. Anyway, today I want to share with you a blog post checklist to help you know that you're covering all your bases when you write a new blog post. So it's going to go through step by step kind of what you need to look for when you're researching, when you're writing, and when you finally hit that publish button on your blog post so that you're confident that you put out good material to the world. Also know that you can always go back and edit your blog post in case you don't have all these things checked off in your past blog posts, you can go and update them. So that's the beauty of the online world. Um, anyway, if you like my videos, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. And um, hit the little thumbs up button and the little bell button and all the stuff below so that you just make my day. Anyway, let's get into the content. All right, so first thing we wanna do when you create a new blog post is at least research, right? See if it is a keyword or a topic that people are searching for. If you don't know how to do quick SEO keyword research, I have a link below that will help you with that. Um, review the top Google results, kind of see what is their intent with those articles. Is that the same intent that your article is going to serve as well? Is it informative? Is it with a buying intent? Is it what kind of, what are you going to give your reader when they come to your post? Um, look at the suggested research or searches at the bottom of Google and see if you can incorporate those topics into your blog post too. So you're kind of researching kind of what topic you're going to write about and what's going to be in it. And then make a list of the related keywords that has to go into the post. Now the next step is to outline it. Those keywords that you researched in step one, use them naturally throughout your post. Use your H1, H2s, and H3 headings. So um, automatically your title of your blog post is going to be an H1 heading. So be sure to include multiple H2 and H3, potentially H4 headings, just so that you organize and make your blog post easier to read. Um, bold, important key phrases include at least a thousand or more words, depending kind of what your aim is with this article. If it's an emotional article that you're sharing your story and your, your aim is to get a lot of social shares where funny or emotional articles kind of share better on social media, then it can be less than a thousand words. But if you wanted to rank in Google and kind of show up on search engines, then it needs to be a little bit above that thousand word limit, right? To add me to it. Um, have three to seven topics, all H2 headings to organize your blog post, include short paragraphs. If you get to a blog post or an article and you see that there's just a sea of text, like it's hard for you to read it. Um, when you see super long Facebook posts or super long emails, it kind of puts you off. You're like, oh, that's too many words, too long, didn't read, and you scroll to the next thing. So the same thing applies to your blog post. Um, keep the sentences and paragraphs short and sweet and use bullet points. People love bullet points. You guys are loving my bullet points right now in my checklist. So use those in your blog post. Next thing is to write the blog post. And this is the part that I'm not really good at. I'm a very, very slow writer. It takes me about a week or two to write a blog post. So this is not my forte, but this is what I do when I write a blog post. So I try to open it with an open loop story. So something in the beginning paragraph, it doesn't have to be very long, but kind of piques the reader's curiosity to keep them reading. And at the end and the conclusion, I'll close the story. So you kind of like start some kind of curiosity or mystery, and then you go through your blog post and then at the end you close it because as people, we kind of like closure. We kind of like a story throughout our blog post, even if it's an informative blog post or if it's a recipe post or if it's a how-to post, see how you can interweave a story into it and then close it at the end, kind of pique that curiosity. Um, draw the reader in with emotions. Add images or proof. People love images, proofs, charts, graphs, infographics. Those also help you get backlinks. So if you have a really cool infographic in your blog post or a really cool chart, people love linking to that because they're like, oh, that blogger did all the research. They put together this cute little chart. I'm going to use that to justify my um, position that I have in my blog post. So charts and graphs really like help you get backlinks, which is a smart strategy. Um, use a good headline. So there's different um, websites that you can go to to help analyze your, your headline and make sure it has a good score. I'll link to below. Um, embed a YouTube video. So this video that I'm creating right now, I might potentially put onto my blog and embed this into a blog post about blog post checklists. Woohoo! Um, so if you create a video, if you're okay speaking on camera, if you're, um, if you have something that you want to like 
verbally tell your readers and you think it'd be greater to summarize your blog post that way, then include that video. It adds more meat and content to your blog post. And also now you have something on YouTube that has this keyword and then you have something on your blog that has the same keyword. And that's telling Google that you kind of know your stuff and that you're adding more content about the same topic, which gives you more authority. All right. So then the next one is to close the loop in the conclusion, summarize your post, give them a good, clear call to action, a CTA at the end of your post so that there's a purpose. So at the end of the blog post, ask people to subscribe to your email list, ask them to share your blog post, ask them to comment and engage with your blog post. Definitely add outbound links to high authority websites and quote experts in your blog post. It always adds to kind of the authority of your blog post when somebody's like, oh, this person agreed with what this blog post is trying to teach me. Um, definitely include the expert's name and the link to their own website or a link to where you found the quote. All right. So we want to make sure that you are quoting and linking to the right people. Um, then add internal links. So other blog posts in your blog that's related to the current one that you're writing. So in that way, it adds more authority to your blog because you're interlinking to blog posts that are similar content. All right. You want to include read more links at the end of your content. That's the same way that you can add internal links. You can add it within the blog post itself or as read more links at the end, add your correct category and tags, create images, at least two to three pin images. Cause Pinterest is going to help you get traffic initially, create a featured image and add alt um, text to your images to kind of show kind of what your blog post is about adds to that keyword research behind it. Um, if you're looking for stock images to add as featured images or to use as pin images, I do have a link below to 40 different websites that have free or paid for stock images. Super helpful. And as extra credit, as I mentioned before, add an infographic or chart to your blog post. Those really help you get backlinks, um, create a new freebie for your post. That's going to help you get email signups and then proofread it before you hit that publish button. All right. So when we get to the publish button, double check your links. This has happened multiple times to me where I hit publish and I look at my links and something broke or I'm linking to the incorrect thing. Definitely check your links um, after you hit publish. Double check your email sign up. I can't even tell you how many times I've gone to blogs and done blog audits where I get to their blog post. It looks amazing. And then I'm like, oh, I'm so eager to give this blogger my email address and I sign up and it doesn't work. The button doesn't work or the the info isn't correct. So definitely check your email sign up if you have that as a call to action. Interlink to older blog posts and make the post shareable with shareable buttons. And then lastly, now that you've written it, you've published it, it's this amazing blog post, you have to promote it. I know um, most experts say it's 20% creation and 80% promotion. It's because you're going to spend maybe a week creating this blog post, maybe two weeks if you're me, um, but you're going to spend forever promoting it. Like it's not just going to be a one and done thing once a week, once a month, you're going to think about, okay, how can I add more content to this blog post? Where can I share it? Where can I promote it? Maybe you can add another pin image to it. That would be great. Or you can create a video be about the blog post. So definitely at the end here, repurpose the content. If it's a blog post you spend a lot of work and time into, think about ways that you can repurpose that content without creating a new blog post again. So it's always kind of smarter to repurpose the content that's already good on your blog instead of creating something new. Um, definitely create new things like don't always repurpose the same thing, but I'm just letting you know that it's not a one and done thing. When you write a blog post, there's so many other ways that you can repurpose the content and use it again. Um, check the post to answer any comments that you have. Maybe those comments are asking you questions that you then can go back to the blog post and include as H2 headings and answer them within the blog post. So that's a way to kind of expand, um, the, the text size and the text length of your post link to, um, your blog from any other guest post that you wrote, right? So maybe you are guest posting on another bigger blog about this topic, and then you can link back to this specific topic that you wrote about. And then obviously share it with your friends on Facebook, on any social media platform and your email list and, um, and on Pinterest, which I absolutely love. Anyway, if you have any questions, let me know below in the comments. If you want a copy of 
this beautiful blog post checklist. Isn't that gorgeous? That you can use for yourself to make sure that you've covered the basis in your current and future and past blog posts. Just go below. You can get all the resources. There's a little link. You can get it all um, and you can get this blog post checklist for free. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.